Okay, in this video example, I'm going to attempt to rig this uh, finished character that I've done. But there are some things that you need to take note before you actually start to do your rigging. Please make sure all your layout, all your textures are done properly before you do the rigging. Now for certain things like the belts, if you have belts or any other accessories or part of the clothes, right, you try to combine it together with the mesh so that later when you rig, right, these will deform evenly. Otherwise, if you just do it parented, right, it might cut through. However, for certain things like the hat, right, the hat, right, is actually a separate object. So uh, you will not be combining this with the, uh, the head, right? Things like eyebrows or objects, right, if you wanted to deform with the head, please make sure you combine it with the main head itself. For example, I have these pair of eyebrows. Just make sure you combine them using a mesh combine. Okay, another thing about the eyes, okay, you want to leave the eyes separate. You do not want to combine the eyes together with the mesh. You want to keep the eyes independent that, so that you, when you rig them, you can rotate them separately. Now, if your character happens to have a teeth or any internal parts, uh, let me see whether I can open up his mouth. Okay, I think in this version, let me just set up the blend shape again. Ah, okay, I think I have remove the blend shape because I've added the eyebrows. Let me just undo, see whether I can open up his mouth. Okay, let's try that again. It doesn't seem to be working. Okay, anyway, now the camera is inside. If you happen to have any teeth or mouth parts, right? Um, because teeth don't deform, um, you want to keep the teeth and the gums parented to bones instead. So, but I don't think a lot of you are doing any teeth inside the mouth, so you can uh, leave it as that. But that's a tip uh, that you need to be aware of. Okay, for now, I think I'm just going to rig the character without the mouth opening or closing. So I'm just going to reattach the eyebrows to the head again by using mesh combine. And that's it. Okay, the head itself for my character is actually separate because I want to just simply uh, parent the head to a bone instead. So I do not want to merge my head with the rest of the body because if I do that and if I have a head bone uh, if I twist and turn the head right the head will become like a rubber head and distort and deform incorrectly okay, I also have a hair piece here I'm going to simply uh, parent the hair piece to this head so select the hair piece select the head and then press P okay so let me just check my model again I think for the belt, for simplicity, simplicity purposes, I'm going to attach the belt, combine the belt with the rest of the body. Now take note, if you have hard objects like um, buckles, and if you rig it right, your buckle will behave like a rubber object because you deform and distort. So if you do not want that to happen, you want to keep this separate and then just use a parent instead to the joints. Okay, so far we have our objects ready and one more thing I want to parent this hat, just uh, parent it to the 
hairpiece so that now everything is linked together so if I want to rotate the head later on I can do that now notice that my head the axis is at the bottom I want to centralize the axis okay actually I want to put the pivot of the head at the base of the neck or put it at a more suitable pivot point okay alright let me just do another once over and also check my outliner make sure everything is cleaned up nicely delete all the history Okay, this step is very important. Make sure you delete all the history before you do any riggings. And then I think we are ready to go. So we'll first start off by building the human skeleton. Now remember what I've said, when you want to create the human skeleton, right, or when you want to rig, make sure that the, the feet is standing a slight distance apart. You do not want the, f the feet to be standing too close together. Because later when you create the bones and then when you enable skinning, right, the other bone will affect the other area. So make sure that they are a distance apart. Okay? And for your hands, it is best to flay out. Okay, flay out the fingers, open up the fingers. Do not keep the fingers closed or clenched. Alright, so this type of positioning is okay. But if you want uh, your rig to go on without any problems. Uh, make sure you open them up wide, wider. Okay. So I want to cover another part of the behavior of the bones. If you go to create joints, now let's go and create the bones. So go to rigging and under create joints, the option box, you have an option of changing the size of the, the bones or the joints. Because if I were to draw a couple of joints right now, Okay, if you feel that the size is too big, you can actually adjust the bone uh, radius smaller okay, in the subsequent size. So for the upper shadow, or rather the upper arm uh, bones, okay, you can make it bigger. And then for the subsequent uh, bones, you can adjust the radius and make it smaller. Okay, if you want to adjust the joints universally, that means you want to adjust them, all the bone size universally, you can go to display animation and joint size and then you can play the slider to make them bigger or smaller and they will still maintain the size ratio all right so first we need to create the leg bones first uh, this is usually what I'll start first so you can go to the rigging tab and you can click on the joint creation tool start from the pelvic area then go down to the knee then down to the ankle ok I want to create a proper foot so I'll have uh, the foot bone here or actually this one is considered the ankle and then this one is the toe so we can do the bending later on now if you want to make sure you see the bones through your mesh make sure under your shading you turn on x-ray joints okay so now we can see it very very clearly so the subsequent two bones are bigger and then the subsequent bones are smaller so actually this is pretty good so now let's take a look at the front view and you notice that because we created it at the orthographic side view the bone is right at the center of the character so once you created this bone already, you select the root, press W, and then move it until the hip joint is in the correct location. And next, you want to select the secondary bone, and then you also want to slide it in the x-axis to the right, like so. Now, you have another option of doing this because if you do it like that, you will, the your character will sort of behave like he's got some uh, bone, uh, bone problems. 
So I think this is not a good idea because you have this distorted uh, axis going on. So the best would be to select the uh, hip bone and then rotate it outwards. And then select this bone here and then rotate it downwards. Okay, now, but the problem of this is that it might cause. Uh, okay, let me just try to make sure that the joints will rotate properly after I apply an IK. So I'm going to apply an IK here. So go to skeleton, create IK handle, click on the option box, and make sure you choose rotate plane solver. Select the root and then select the ankle. Make sure that they can bend up nicely without the leg joint flipping like that. Okay, right now we can see it flipping in a very weird angle. Okay, so that is not a good thing. Okay, so I'm going to recreate this bone again. Start from the beginning. Ideally, you want to keep the bones uh, rotating as straight as possible. So right now, I'm going to my front view again. Then select the bone. Okay, so I'm going to select this joint here and then move it here. So I'm going to use this other method which I was showing you guys just now. And let's try this method and see how it deforms. So I'm going to use the IK tool, select the base and then select the ankle and then see how that works. Okay, this is even worse. So you can see this is the problem when you move the joints edit it like that. Your joints will just flip back like this. So this is even worse, so I'm not going to use this one. So just now the previous method was better. So I think I'm going to use that one. So it doesn't flip as bad as the second method which I was using. So that's why rigging right really depends on the design of your character. So I think the best option is to actually move it, move the joint here and then rotate it until it matches the axis of the bone. Okay, I'm going to just move this until I can get it as much as I can to the center here. Then, that's it, I'm just going to rotate but I'm not going to move the bones. Now this time I'm going to apply the IK again root and then the ankle and then I'm just going to move this up and down and now I can see the bending is much more predictable because the leg is moving in a much more predictable axis okay but I think I can still adjust this the ankle until it fits the foot location and I'm just going to move the IK, con IK handle again to make sure that I have to open up the outliner and grab the IK handle and then I'm just moving up and down okay see just by shifting the position of the bone I got a problem of the leg bone flipping so that was a mistake I should have done that let me just undo that So you can see the bones are very sensitive when you move the position. You will just change the rotational axis of the joints. So I'm going to leave it at that. Now before, okay, before I create the other joints, I have to rename the joints. If you do not have the habit of renaming your joints, what is going to happen is that everything will be joint one, two, three, four, and you don't have any idea what is which, which is what. So this one I'm going to call it the left 
click uh, joint okay for the left up the left I'm going to put an underscore I'm going to call the second one left leg J I think J I'm going to shorten the joint to JNT then underscore zero two and this one I'm going to call it left underscore ankle JNT then this one is the foot left and then finally the toe Okay, so we have the leg, leg uh, bone two, okay, the ankle, then the foot. Okay, so in this example, I think I placed the knee uh, too far apart, but I think we, this one will still work. Okay, we'll just have to adjust the weight painting a little bit later on. Okay, so now we have the joints properly named, and we can perform the mirroring. So I'm going to mirror the other joint to the other side. So to do that, you go to your skeleton and you choose the mirror joints. And click on the option box to, then to make sure that you're mirroring the correct axis. So in this case, right, we are mirroring in the YZ plane, which is already added in. I'm going to mirror the behavior. So hopefully it will mirror my uh, IK joints as well, IK controllers. So under these two boxes, I'm going to search for anything that's been labeled left and then I'm going to rename it to right so once that is done I'm going to hit mirror and now I have a secondary joint um, the IK handle let me just check to see whether it works yeah the IK handle works as well so that is good the IK handle of the other leg also works as well so now I have a working leg joint so now let's start to work with the spine Again, starting with the right view, I'm going to hide these uh, heads somewhere else. Just position them aside. So for the spine, you start from the base of the spine, naturally. Click on it to start at the bottom and then click one piece here. And then the secondary piece and then the third piece for the spine then the neck and then finally the head and then press enter okay so of course the spine we don't need to mirror it but we do need to rename it so we're going to call it spine base underscore then I'm going to spine base joint for the main I'm going to open up the hierarchy and the second joint zero two joint I'm going to call this uh, spine zero three This one, I'm going to call it the neck. This one is the head join. And then finally, this one is the head tip. You can give it whatever names you want, but make sure that the names are recognizable so you know that what you're doing. Okay, now we come to the arms. So in this case, I've modeled my arms, right, or rather my hands, pointing upwards um, so this one is depending on um, which type of uh, which angle do you want your arms to bend for for my case here I want it to bend upwards at this angle so this is not a very common way of rigging okay if you want a more common one uh, you should look at the other video that I did uh, where, I, where I rigged up the one of the students models 
So for this one, I'm going to draw the bones in the front view rather than the side view. Okay, so I'm going to draw the bones starting from here. We're going to do a clavicle bone first, right up to here. So this clavicle bone is very important because it allows your character to do shrugs. That means you're lifting up your shoulders. And then the second bone would be the upper arm. And then finally, we'll reach the wrist. So once I create the bones, okay, I'm going to stop at the wrist because I'm going to create the fingers separately before parenting them to the wrist. So without moving the bones and anything, we can start to do our IK. So since we already set our IK to the rotational uh, version, the rotate plane solver version, we can select the upper arm. arm. Remember, select the upper arm, not the clavicle. Select the upper arm, then select the wrist. Okay, and then test. Okay, test your wrist. Make sure that it works. Okay, this one shouldn't be a problem. Whenever it goes up to close to 90 degrees, then you'll flip over. Okay, that is the normal behavior. Okay, uh, the bending is very predictable, so that's good. Okay, so now we have to name our bones, the joints. So for this one, I'm going to call it clavicle. Uh, this one is the left clavicle. JNT. Okay, holding down the shift and then clicking on plus, you will open up all your uh, hierarchy. Then the second one we'll call it upper, uh, left upper arm. JNT. I'm going to put an underscore so that later the mirror I'm going to put an underscore for all the names after left so that the mirror function will rename it properly then this one left underscore lower um, joint then this one is the wrist joint Okay, so we can do our uh, mirror. So go to, yeah, before we do our mirror, please make sure that the bones are actually residing inside the mesh. So when we create it, you can see that the bones are actually out. So I'm going to grab the root and then just put it inside. Make sure you go to the top view and make sure that the bones are nicely positioned within the arm itself. You can only rotate the root Try not to rotate the, the, the children or even move them. Otherwise, you will drastically affect the uh, rotational behavior of the joints. Okay, once you have done that, go to the front view. Okay, select the hierarchy and then go ahead and mirror. So go to skeleton and then mirror joints. Okay, make sure you set the correct plane and the behaviors and then hit mirror. So if you've done everything correctly, you should have another uh, right controller. Test the controller, make sure that this join works as well. And in fact, this one doesn't work. So we have to manually set up the IK again. So go right ahead and set up the IK. I'm gonna delete away this Defector that doesn't work. Select the root and then select the select the upper arm, sorry, not the root, and then select the wrist. And now if you grab the handle Okay, it should work. Okay, I think I grabbed the wrong thing earlier on. Let me just undo. Just do the mirror again, just to confirm that everything works. Oh, 
Okay, it doesn't have an IK handle. So I have to manually recreate this. So select the root and then so select the upper arm joint and then select the uh, wrist. So now I have the IK handle, then I can bend it nicely. So using the mirror tool, you don't have to redraw the bones all over again. Okay, now before we parent the bones, the arm joints to the uh, spine and the leg joints to the base of the spine, we have to set up the the constraints, the IK constraints, the pole vectors. Okay, so to create a pole vector, we go to the right view. We turn on the snap on grid magnet here, and then we create a NURBS curve. So go ahead and create a NURBS curve. Uh, EP curve tool, click on the option box. Make sure you turn it from 3 cubic to 1 linear. And because your snap is on, you'll be able to create a very nice uh, arrow. So you can click on any of the grid box and then you can start to create your arrow head using the grid box as a guide. And then press enter to finish creating the arrow pointer. Then go and modify, center the pivot. Okay, modify. Uh, freeze transformation actually I think I did it that a bit too early okay I'm gonna select this pole vector constraint and then I'm gonna put it right in front of this uh, left knee okay, I'm gonna turn off the grid snap I'm gonna go to the front view and make sure that it is positioned exactly in front of the knee joint okay so now we need to grab the IK controller of the the bone and then constrain the knee so that it's always pointing towards this arrow okay so make sure you select the correct object so the IK controller is this uh, brown object here okay if you cannot find it you can always find it here in the outliner so let me just name this properly I'm gonna call this uh, left foot IK handle so it's much more obvious okay so we need to do it in such a way that we select this um, knee knee vector okay we call it the knee controller so I'm gonna call this left knee controller so we're gonna use the constraint where we select the masters first then we select the slave so select the master, in this case the left knee controller and then you hold on to your control key and then you left mouse click on the left foot IK handle so remember for constraints it's always master then the slave then go to your constraint and then apply a pole vector so once you've correctly applied it you notice there's another line that will stick out so when you click on the controller and then when you move you notice that now the knee is doing this kind of action Okay, so now we need to duplicate this controller and put it on the other side. So let's go to the front view. I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate this and then put it exactly in front of the right knee. So I'm going to rename this in the outliner, call this the right knee controller. Let's remove the one. I'm going to close all these hierarchies to clean up my outline a bit. And we're going to do the same thing. First, we need to locate the IK handle. Now, if you zoom in, you will see that the IK handle is this brown uh, three line thing. So, we're going to select the handle, rename it, call it the right foot IK handle. So, we can easily identify it. So, the first thing we need to select is this controller here the right knee controller then can shift select here in the 3d port view master slave then constraint then choose pole vector so once you have done that test it out to make sure that it controls the knee all right now for this elbow here we have to put the elbow controller behind okay, but for 
for this purpose right now I'm going to put it uh, in front first so I'm going to select this controller I'm going to press control D duplicate another one and put it behind and then I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees so that it's pointing the other way and then I'm going to bring this controller up until it's in line with the elbow okay so the elbow is essentially like the knee of the leg so I'm going to position it until it is directly in front of the elbow joint okay but in this case right now because of the way the arm is pointing I'm going to try to put it right below first I'm gonna, because I'm not don't do this often I'm just gonna do some tests first I'm gonna put the elbow controller right below but in line with the elbow like this okay now one thing to take note when you draw the joints make sure you always draw it with a slight bend because if you do not draw it with a slight bend you apply IK it might flip your bones might flip to the other direction okay so right now we have the IK handle we need to rename our controllers let me just rename this first I call this the left elbow controller I'm gonna duplicate this shift D or control D and then move this to the other elbow I'm gonna rename this one the right elbow controller okay and then we're gonna perform our constraints so select the IK handle and then in this case I'm going to rename this I'm going to call this the left hand then a control IK control CTRL for short form and then I'm going to select the elbow control first then shift select the IK handle then go and apply a pole vector constraint so now if I grab the pole vector and move it around the elbow should change position just like that so that works so I'm going to do the same thing for the other side I'm going to rename this IK handle first and call this the right hand control okay so select the right elbow, con uh, right elbow controller first then shift Okay, actually I named this wrongly, I should call this the uh, IK, IK control, IK handle, right hand IK handle, yeah, that's the right name. So select this, uh, right elbow controller first, then shift select the IK handle, and then go ahead and apply the constraint, pole vector constraint. Test out the uh, pole vector constraint first and then make sure that it actually con control the elbow rotating okay so now we want to do the fingers okay so this one is the tricky one because there's a lot of fingers here so what you need to do is just do one first and then we're going to duplicate for the rest of the fingers and even the thumb okay so I'm going to start off with the middle finger because it is the probably the longest one and then we can scale and uh, change the size of the fingers for the smaller ones or for the shorter ones so I'm going to start off with the front view and I'm just going to create my finger joints right into the palm first start off from the palm then we have the long joint upper joint and then the Okay, so I'm going to finish and then I'm going to make sure and check that the joint size are correct. Just going to move it up a little bit. Okay, the position of the joint, I'm going to readjust it. Now, I do not recommend setting up IK handles for this. 
Okay, when you create the joint, make sure that it's lined up like this. Uh, then you'll make it much easier. Now, do not move or rotate in the top view like this. In the front view, in the orthographic view, it's still okay. But however, in your top view, try not to select the bones and move it in this axis. You will totally mess up the rotational line. So you want to grab the root and then start by positioning the fingers to the correct joint. The only thing you can do is actually select the root and rotate. Okay, so I'm going to select one of the bones here first. And let me just confirm in the front view that it's in the correct location. You can also go to perspective view and make sure that the bones are encased correctly. Okay, so this one I can push it in a little bit. Okay, one thing you notice that I will have to rotate it so that the bones will fall within this finger. So I'm going to use my rotate in my top view and then just rotate it. And then I'm going to move it until it is falls within the mesh itself. Okay, you can actually rotate the root bone in this axis so that it falls within the mesh. So now I got one of the bones uh, nicely oriented. Okay, next you can go to the top view and you can press Ctrl D to duplicate another to the other joint here. You can go to perspective view to check, make sure that it is within. And you notice because this one is much bigger, you notice that its size is. Uh, we need to adjust the size. So we go to the front view. Okay, push it lower. Okay, I want to make sure that the bones are still rotating properly. So, yeah. So this one still works, so that's good. So how do you check whether the bones are rotating the correct axis? You select the root, then you shift select the second bone and the third bone. Then you grab only one of the axis in line and then you just rotate them all together. So if they can close up nicely like this, that means you have positioned the bone properly. Okay, I think the second bone is positioned nicely. So now I can do the, the third one, go to the top view, Control D, and position it can try to scale this down a little bit okay you can s scale the individual uh, joints until they match so go to the front view I'm going to readjust this so that it matches the pinky finger go to the top view and see whether you need to rotate it so in this case it doesn't seem to need any rotation other than this axis here. Okay, I'm happy with this. So now let's duplicate this one. Control D. Now rotate the root axis, and it seems to fit this one almost perfectly in the top view at least. So go to the perspective view and check. I need to rotate it along its z-axis and that's it the bone is nicely within the palm okay now comes the thumb itself now for the thumb okay we need to select one of the joints and then um, rotate in such a way that it matches the orientation so I'm going to select this bone press ctrl D and then duplicate this and I'm going to rotate it in its own axis okay remember to position this you want to rotate you do not want to move the bones into shape because it will mess up the orientation of the bones and then you have very unpredictable rotation behaviors
Okay, so you want to select the bones individually, select the root, second, third, then you grab the axis and make sure that it is bending in the correct axis that you want the bone to deform. So in this case, the axis is, seems to be bending the way that I want. I need to just adjust a little bit more. The only thing that I need to change right now is the scale. So I'm going to grab this bone, scale it up. Now, remember for bones, right, you don't really need to worry about uh, changing the X, uh, what the uh, freezing the freezing the scale or anything like that. Right, so now I got my uh, bones for the thumb more or less aligned. Just need to adjust a little bit more. And I think that's pretty much it. So I just want to verify the rotation axis again. Okay, so I'm happy with this. So we have all of our four fingers, our thumb, and uh, okay, maybe this thumb here, I want to rotate it. Okay, maybe from here, just a little bit more. So it falls within inside. Okay, so now I'm happy with this. Now, uh, for time's sake, right, I'm not going to spend every individual time to uh, name the joints. So the next uh, option that you want to do is to select the root of each of these finger joints and then you parent them to the wrist. Now before we do that, uh, we are going to mirror the joints first. So I'm going to select these uh, joints. Well actually on second thought, I think I need to rename them. Okay, I'll just rename the main joint first. Okay, this one is the middle finger left L underscore left underscore mid thing this one is the ring thing I'm not gonna name the subsequent fingers because it's gonna take too long you can use whatever naming convention that works for you this one will be the pinky One is the index, left index. Finally, this one, left thumb. Okay, so everything got a left, left, left. So I can just select all these joints, and then I'm gonna apply a mirror so that I had the right, right uh, finger joints created. So let's apply. Okay, I think the mirror will only work on one joint at a time. So let me just do it one more one at a time. Skeleton, mirror the joint, press middle finger, press G again to repeat the command. Press G to repeat command and then press index and re repeat the command. So if you mirror your mesh properly, the other joint should okay, mirror exactly properly and nicely. Now, as usual, I have a bad habit of not saving. So, if you've done substantial work, always save. Okay, so now you notice that the uh, finger joints are actually separate from the wrist. So, we want to select the root of these joints first, then select the wrist joint last and then press P to parent them. Okay, do the same for the other one. Select the root joints, then finally select the wrist joint and press P to parent them. So right now if I were to grab the IK controller, you'll notice that now the hands are following as well. If I move them up and down, you see the hands will follow. So that's good. Okay, now we continue the parenting. Now for the parenting, we want to parent the clavicle to the neck joint here. So select the two clavicles, then select the neck joint last, then press P 
to parent. Then for the leg joints, you select the two leg joints, the roots. Then finally select the spine joint and then press P to join them. So right now you have a fully parented skeleton. Okay, but our rigging is not uh, fully done yet. Okay, we still need to create other controllers so that we can move the whole skeleton around. Okay, and even our leg controllers are still not done properly yet. So we need to uh, set it up properly. Now, for if you want to set up a much more complex leg uh, controller, I'll suggest you watch this video that I've done, this rigging this single foot character. You can use the exact same technique to rig a very uh, flexible foot controller. Now, because this will take quite a while, I will be just doing something much simpler instead. Okay, so first we need to create the NURP controllers. So again, create a NURP circle. I'm going to scale this NURP circle up and then uh, flatten it in the X axis so that it covers the entire foot. Okay, Shift D, duplicate another one. And of course, please name them accordingly. I'm going to call this the right foot control, C N C T R L. Then this one, I'm going to call it the, sorry, I named it wrongly. This one is the left foot controller. This right foot control. Okay, I'm going to create another nerve circle. And I'm going to be using this to control the wrist. So I'm going to scale this up a little bit. Then holding down to uh, move and holding down the V, middle mouse click and drag until it joins, it snaps to the center here. Rotate this 90 degrees so that it's oriented like that. Okay, you can use a different angle here. And then I'm going to call this the right, uh, left hand control. Now this left hand control, I'm going to duplicate, control D, move it to the other side. Okay, holding down the V again, middle mouse click and drag, and then let it snap to the wrist bone here. Then rename this as right hand control. Okay, there are still a number of controllers we need to create. We need to create the controllers for the, the waist, okay, the entire body, and uh, also okay, the head. Okay, so I'm, let's go and create them. So again, circle again. I'm going to create a large circle. This one is to control the whole thing. I'm going to press Control D again to duplicate another smaller circle and position it to the waist okay I'm gonna duplicate another one control D another circle let's make this one slightly smaller and I'm gonna snap this to this bone here move and snap Okay, so far so good. We have most of the controls and the maybe the head controller. Okay, this one maybe to control the rotation of the head. Okay, snap it into position. So we create a simple uh, bunch of controllers first. 
and uh, we can start to do our constraints. So we'll start with the wrist first. So for the constraint, we want to constrain the hand, uh, this IK handle to follow this control. Now before we do that, always select your controllers and freeze the transformation. Okay, I'm going to select and then press G to freeze all the controllers transformations, reset them to zero. This is especially important if you are rigging for someone who is going to do animation. Because usually when you, when you start off with a neutral rig, you want everything to be at zero position. Okay, then we can start our, our rigging process. Okay, so let's Okay, this one is not at the correct position. Okay, I'm snapping into position again and then freeze the transformation. Okay, make sure you snap it to the, the correct center uh, position of the bone. Now, select the master, then shift select the slave, in this case the uh, IK handle. Then go ahead and click on constrain and uh, choose a parent. So, in the, uh, in the option box, make sure you turn on maintain offset and then apply. So once you apply it, you can see that the controls in the channel box has turned blue or the transforms has turned blue, so that means it's being constrained. You can grab the handle and if you move it around, you can see the bones are following. Okay, But you notice one thing, the hands, the axis are also uh, rotating in a weird angle. Now if you do not want that to happen, you want it to follow the orientation of the controller, we're going to apply another uh, orientation. So we're going to select the, this is the uh, wrist bone here. We want the wrist bone to follow the orientation of this handle. So, or this control, uh, this controller. So select the controller first, then shift select the wrist bone, then apply a constraint orient. Again, option box, turn the maintain option, uh, maintain offset on and apply. So once this is applied, you'll notice that the hands are now behaving in a much nicer fashion. Okay, it will only rotate when you rotate the handle. Okay, so this is much better. Okay, we're going to do the same for the other side. So master, shift, select, slave, then go to control, uh, constraint then apply a parent, then select the wrist bone, sorry, select the controller first, then shift select the wrist bone, and then apply a constraint orient. Then again, test it out, grab the handle, move it around, then rotate, make sure that the wrist is followed. So if you've done that, congratulations, you can move on to the next step. Okay, for the hip, okay, we don't move to the hip first, we'll do the foot. <coughs> now, we need to create another controller at the uh, ankle here. So I'm going to create another circle. Make it a little bit bigger. And then snap it into place. Move, middle mouse click and drag, and then snap it into place. And we can make this slightly bigger. Now, this ankle controller, of course, I'm going to name it accordingly. Uh, this is the left ankle CTRL. I want to parent this left ankle controller to the foot controller here. So, select this left ankle controller, shift select the uh, left foot controller and press P. So, in this case, you can use parent and select the anchor controller, shift select the IK handle, then apply a constraint parent, so that now when you grab this controller, okay, it will control the handle. But if you grab this, this is the parent, you control the whole thing. But you notice something, the foot right, is rotating up and down in a very annoying manner. So we want to force the orientation of the foot to follow this 
controller. So select this controller first, then shift select this bone here, and then apply a orient constraint. So that now when I rotate this foot, okay, it will follow the constraint like that. Okay, at least this part will remain flat. So we're going to do, do the same thing for the other side. So select this controller and press Shift, Control D rather, and then uh, move this other controller to the other side. Okay, holding down the V, middle mouse click and drag, and then snap it to this joint here. Select the this now. I'm going to rename as right foot controller. Sorry, right ankle controller. Okay, I'll just make sure this thing is named. Okay, sorry, this is wrong. This one should be the left. Ah, because it's in the hierarchy. Okay. Let me just rename this properly first. Okay, let me just undo because <laughs> I think there's a much faster way. Yeah, so I need to unparent this one. So just click on this in the outline, the middle mouse click and drag it out. And I'm going to rename this as right ankle controller. Yep, that's it. Okay, so now it's parented properly. And we're going to apply the constraints. So master, then select the slave, constraint, parent. And then we want to orient this constraint orientation to this uh, foot controller. So select the foot controller, shift select the joint, then go ahead and constraint orient. Test it, make sure that it works. Okay, again, I forgot to do the freeze transformation, this is very important, go and freeze the transformation of the controllers okay so our foot is uh, more or less done now we can do the hip hip is more straightforward it is the hip controller so I'm going to call this the hip CTRL and select the hip then Shift select the main joint and then go to constraint parent. So now if I were to grab this guy, you see that this guy looks like uh, his foot and everything is being constrained, so it's being tied up. Alright. So next thing we want to do is to create this uh, sort of like a hip rotation. Uh, so that he can do the rotate his hip because currently if I grab this and then rotate you notice that uh, the upper part is rotating together so we want to force the orientation of this bone to match this controller okay so I gotta call this upper hip control So select this uh, joint first, sorry, controller first, then shift select this upper joint, which is this uh, spine base joint, and then go to constraint orient. Okay, so now if I grab this uh, hip and then I do this, you can do this kind of hip rotation action. Okay, so I'm going to apply a uh, constraint to this controller for this controller okay, I know it sounds strange but I want this controller to follow this uh, controller okay so select the master then shift select this and then I want to apply a point constraint okay I do not want this object to affect the rotation however okay when I want to rotate them both together or when I move them together, I want 
the upper controller to follow. Okay, so this is a simple uh, setup. Actually, this is considered simple, um, not making it too complex. Okay, there's still one more constraint, which is the um, the head bone, the head control. So I'm going to call this the head. I still got another nerve circle. I don't know where this comes from. Oh, this is the main one, so I call this the main. Okay, this is where I'm going to parent all the controllers to this big circle here. So for the head controller, I only want to parent this uh, constraint parent to this uh, controller here. So this controller select it, then shift select this head bone, do a constraint, and then do a parent. And now, when I rotate, the head will also rotate, and when I move, okay, the head, the neck will follow as well. Okay, there are a couple of more constraints that uh, you, you can set it up. That means you can do a uh, rotation constraint to this uh, clavicle so that we can do things like, like this. Right, you can do the shrugging. Okay, so you can do individual or two shrugs. But that, that's really up to you. But we, remember, we are creating a rig more for posing rather than animation. But still, we want to create enough uh, control so that we can post the uh, post your character properly. Okay, so once that is done, we save the file. And right now, we need to select all the controls and then parent them accordingly. So we're going to select this control. I'm going to parent it to this hip control by pressing P. And all the other controls. Okay, right now I'm just going to select them in the outliner. And uh, okay, most of them are selected now. And then I'm going to shift select the main control last, and then press P to make it the master control. So when I grab this master control, it should. Okay, there's still one more control that is not parented. Okay, they just press P. So it should, when you click on the main controller, it should bring the whole skeleton around and the rest of the bones with it. And even if you scale, it will also scale everything. Okay, the only thing that doesn't scale right now is the joints because we need to select the master joints, shift, select the main control and parent it to it as well. So now, if I were to scale, you see you can make your bones bigger or smaller. So next time you have the option, once you skin properly, you have the option of changing the scale of your character as well. You can make him small or big. Okay, so let's begin the next step. Now let me just save another version of this. And we can actually start to do our skinning. Okay, so. I need to. I have not stitched. Let me check whether I've stitched the. Okay, let me unparent the Gurkha hat first because I do not want the Gurkha hat to be. Do not want the Gurkha hat to be uh, affected. So this one, I should rename this, call this as a hit. Okay, so to rig, you just simply select the uh, main joint. So all the hierarchy is selected. Then shift select the skin. And then you apply a skin. And then just apply a bind skin. If you click on the options, right, these are all the defaults. Okay, the uh, drop off rate, everything. You can just reset to make sure everything is correct. And then hit bind skin. So once you bound the skin already, you can try by moving the controllers. 
and see how your mesh deform. Okay, so you can see there are some problem areas here which we will need to fix in the paint weight section. Okay, I'm going to move the joints down like that. And I'm going to push this behind. Okay, so you can see some uh, issues here. The influence is affecting the joint here. Okay, let's test this one here. Okay, the hips are okay. So remember, I did not attach, I did not rig skin the head yet. So that's why you can see the head is not being deformed. Okay, there's a slight issue with the rigging of the head. Uh, I should not have parented this joint up here. So let me just select this and unparent this. I'm going to parent it to the main controller instead. Okay, this is better. Okay, the elbow seems to be working, however, there's a very nasty uh, crushing effect here, which I need to fix. Okay, now let's check, check the foot. Okay, the foot seems to be a little bit more predictable. Of course, the knee area there is collapsing quite a bit. Okay, let me just undo, place everything back in its correct position first and I'm going to fix this shift P to unparent this again and just, just parent this to here instead ok so let's try Okay, now let's do the head. So select the neck, okay, the neck bone joint area here. Then shift select the head mesh and then go and apply a bind skin. So now the skin is bound to the bone, uh, the head. So you can see the head is following it, but it looks really horrible because the head is behaving like a rubber head. Then the eyes are not following because remember we need to parent the eyes to the bones. So select the eyes, then shift select the bone, then press P. Then do the same for the teeth as well. So I'm just going to dive into the teeth. My character has teeth. Okay, so it's actually a teeth group. So I'm going to grab all the teeth and select the bone and then parent them as well. So now if I rotate the head it will follow but you can see the eyes are not really uh, distorting nicely. So this is actually not a very good way. If you think about it, the, the head bone itself is actually um, very very stiff. So normally what we do is we don't really skin the head to the bone. We actually apply uh, just a simple parent will do. Okay, perhaps the neck itself, the neck area, then we will bind. So later we can paint, uh, paint the tool so that it doesn't really affect. But uh, or rather, we will make it, uh, make this bone right affect it at hundred percent so that it doesn't deform uh, like a rubber head. 
Okay, in fact, we can do it right now. So we're going to select the skin and we go to the skin and click on the paint weight skin. Okay, and if you notice on the left hand corner of the tool, we can click on this icon and we can start to play with the head joint. Now, we want the head skin to follow the head joint at full effect. So with the head joint selected, you can click on paint and you can add this. Uh, there's a fill effect flood effect we can click on flood so flooding what does flood do flood will basically flood the strength so you can see now the head is actually affecting or rather the bone is affecting the entire portion of the head okay, but we want the neck to be affected by the lower portion so let's move on to the let's select the skin of the face again and double click to open up the skin editor we can Okay, ignore the head tip. We can go to the neck joint. Okay, we want the neck joint to be affecting this area. So we can start to paint around the neck. Okay, and then we move on to the lower spine joint. Or rather left clavicle and the right clavicle head joint we do not want it to affect the bottom part so I'm gonna paint that away to make it easier I think I'm just going to isolate selection so for the neck joint I do not want it to affect this portion here okay the head tip is also affecting this portion I do not want seem to be a problem okay let me just undo this okay I'm not getting the results that I want uh oh there's a crash okay, it's a good thing I've saved this So better save your work because these things can and will happen. Okay, I think the video has ran long enough. Uh, I think we'll continue the skinning part on another video. Okay, meanwhile, uh, try to set up your bone system with all the controllers. And just experiment. It's okay to make a few mistakes here and there. That's the only way you can, you can learn. All right, so I'm going to stop recording now and we're going to continue uh, with another video that focused primarily on the weight painting.